Hey everybody, it's Professor Evans here. It's Wednesday night about 6.30 p.m. here in Connecticut. Uh, we're just digging ourselves out from the massive snowstorm we had uh, Monday into Tuesday. Um, so, uh, right about now you guys should be, if not already finishing up, uh, starting to think about your uh, first response to our discussion board question. And uh, the discussion board question is to take a look at a kid's book and uh, to try to come up with the theme of that book. And I think, you know, there's two really good ways to, to try to come up with a theme to a text. The first way is to think about the problems that the character deals with and then how they eventually change or overcome uh, that problem, right? So if a character is dealing with uh, guilt, then at the end of the book, have they overcome that guilt? Have they learned anything about guilt? Have they become more or less guilty and why? And coming up with the answer to those questions will help you figure out theme. That's one way. The second way is to really ask yourself, what is this story really about? And boil it down to one word. And I talked about this in my video on Monday. Is your story mostly about family? Okay, let's say it is. So you start with one word, family. And then you ask yourself, well, what's the author saying about family? And you turn it into a three-word sentence. Well, uh, the author's saying that family is important. Okay, so I'm kind of at a theme. But then I ask myself, okay, well, what's the author saying about family being important? Why is family important? And then I say, well, family is important because they're going to be there for you when uh, other people may not be there for you. And I base that off of the events that have occurred in the book. Now, once I've developed that nice big sentence, now I have my theme and I start it with a single word and I just try to develop that based on what I have read. So in the spirit of um, children's literature, I thought I would pick this book to talk about today, The Love Monster by Rachel Bright. Now, this book holds a special place in my heart because when my daughter was little, tiny, itty bitty, uh, I would read this book to her every night before bed. I would read her this book. And I would sing uh, Down by the Bay, where the watermelons grow, to her. And I would sing Billy Joel's Lullaby to her before bed. And then I would put her in her crib. And sometimes I'd have to repeat it a couple times before she actually fell asleep. But Love Monster is an awesome book. If you have kids um, or you ever have to read to kids for whatever reason, it's about this monster, who I guess is named Love Monster. They never really give him a name. And he's kind of this funny-looking monster who lives in a world of, as it says here, cute, fluffy things right? Official pile of extreme cuteness. And so he's really struggling with being this funny looking monster who lives in a world of cute, fluffy things, right? So he decides to go out and find uh, somebody who will, you know, somebody who looks like him. Um, and at the end, after going out and uh, not finding anybody and not finding anybody and not finding anybody, um, he finds another monster just when he's about to give up hope and they hold hands and they fall in love and love finally finds him after not really being sure of his place in the world. So if I'm going to apply what I just taught you guys about theme to this very, you know, simple children's book, I'm thinking to myself, well, what this, what is this book mainly about? Well, it's called love monster. Uh, so it's, I think it's probably mainly about love. Um, and what is this story, what is this author telling us about love? Uh, well, uh, saying that love is important. Okay, but that's not good enough. So let's expand that a little. Love is important because sometimes when we feel lost or lonely, uh, love can help us find companionship. And that is a theme of this book. Now, if I want to take the other approach and think, well, what's the problem and how did this character solve it? Well, I would think uh, the love monster really doesn't have any sort of sense of identity. Doesn't have anyone who's like him. Well, he solves the problem by going out into the world and taking a risk and eventually finding someone. So maybe another possible theme for this story is sometimes you have to take risks to really get what you want in life. There you go. Two different themes. I came up with them in two totally different ways based on two ways of thinking about theme, but both of them would be correct. All right. That's it for now, guys. I just wanted to give you a little bit of tip to help you answer the question for this week. Um, and I hope you're having a great week. All right. Take care, guys.
Bye.